and welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you somebody that I started following and I ended up getting a copy of his book and I highly recommend you grab this book. You can get it on his website. You can get it on Amazon. As you can tell, I've, I've noted this book. It's got some great great content in there. So sit down, buckle up, grab some popcorn, because this is going to be a great conversation. Y'all give it up for Brian Byro. <laughs> and you get, had, the, you get the award because you did Brian Byro's bio flawlessly. How do you like oh, that? Oh, man. <laughs> well, I had to like enunciate down. I don't want to mess it up by any stretch. <laughs> I don't Brian. even get it right, so it's okay. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, thanks, Gary. I mean, it's just a blast to be with you. And I, I got to tell you, the uh, um, I, I love people. And so my whole life, life has been centered around a belief that we have a ton of good in us. And so um, my my first role, as you get every email from me, it says, Brian Byro, husband, father, grandfather, speaker, author. Um, yeah. So I always keep priorities, but I've been a professional speaker now for 33 years. Had I've actually had three really neat careers. First career, I was a U.S. swimming coach. So I was working with young athletes to try to rise to their potential. Went back to school to get a life, not to get a job. And I, I ended up with both. I ended up going in the corporate world, ended up becoming a, a vice president first of a very large uh, tr international transportation company and then an international training company. And doing that training in my own company was what set me on the path for what has been my my dream career, which is a professional speaker for 33 years. I've spoken to almost a million people around the world, um, all over the world, um, and about about possibility, about building teams, building families, building people, about uh, shaping your future, about really controlling your controllable. So my my passion is I'm so lucky to do work that I, I believe I was put on earth to do. We were joking before the show that when I'm on stage, I'm 25, off stage, no, I'm 69, <laughs> but on stage 25, because I'm doing what I was put on earth to do. Oh, that, that's incredible. And, and you know, Brian, a couple of things that you said that just kind of pointed out to me before we even start the show here. I love how you've got things in order. You're a husband, you're a father, and you're a grandfather first. And I think once people recognize getting things in order first, family first, and then work, then it just things work better when you have that kind of order in your life. And I, and I love that you pointed that out, Brian. So, thank so thank, thank you for, for doing that. And I can tell you are in your calling. You're an inspiration and, and I love what you're doing. I love the content that you're sharing. I love, I, I got to get the other books, but I absolutely adore this book, but I love to connect with leaders that are inspiring. And you're one of those, Brian. And I love to peek behind the curtain and see what inspires these inspiring leaders. And so I reached out to you and asked for, you know, hey, what inspires you? You brought back three incredible points. And I want to get to these. The first one you talked about is breakthrough leadership. So what is that? Unpack that a little bit. Share with us what breakthrough leadership means to you and, and why does that inspire you? Well, I love it. I'm called America's Breakthrough Speaker because I really believe that's what every event is about. Every event I speak at is about trying to break through from, from one level to a higher level, break through from fear to freedom, from failure to faith, from ego to ego, from good to great. Life is about breaking through. It's about breaking through. And ultimately, there's just one breakthrough. You break through from fear to love. That's it. And, and fear has a lot of names. But every time you choose fear, you know it. You feel... You think of all the reasons you can't, how you're not quite good enough, of how it's easier to hide. And every time you choose the love side, you're like my grandchildren. They're four and almost seven where anything's possible. And so I've spent a lifetime in those three careers really kind of condensing and crystallizing this concept called breakthrough leadership. The first key is that everyone is a leader. You know, we've, we've been taught that there's leaders and there's followers. We are all the CEOs of our own life. And if you think about it, what is leadership? Leadership is nothing more than making decisions and then acting upon them. So you, long before you were in your work, you were making decisions about what you would do with your life. How do you show up every day? That's a huge part of your leadership that's speaking to everyone all the time. Um, how do you deal with adversity and with challenge, with change? We've had tremendous amount of that and it's not gonna slow down, it's gonna speed up. And probably most important of all, what kind of impact do you have on people? 
Do you lift them up by who you are? Do you inspire? Do you neutralize? Do you bring people down? So the starting place of breakthrough leadership is to know that, hey, guess what? I am a leader because I'm making choices every day. And I am I am a teacher every day by the way I conduct my life. And then, then with that foundation, the key to really understanding breakthrough leadership, it's about three controllables. Um, you never notice when you're controlling your controllables how much more confident you feel, how much more momentum you feel. It's when we try to control the things we don't control that we get disillusioned, frustrated, angry. And so these three controllables at the heart of breakthrough leadership, the first is to shape your future. And that's really about understanding the power of vision that uh, if, if I if I want to have a life that I want to create, I got to start focusing on what I want to create. And it has two pieces. One, what you focus on is what you create, not what you get, what you create. So as you start to focus on the obstacle, you can shift your vision towards what do I really want? How can I be better? And the second is, uh, as you know from that book uh, that, you, that you showed, is to no longer use your memory to see. Um, we so often use our memory to see. I start that book with kind of a fun little, a fun little question that I've asked thousands and thousands of people in my events. I ask them, what color is a yield sign? And 90.9% .9 of people say they're yellow. Well, 52 years ago, they turned to red and white. There are <laughs> triangles with red and white letters. And people go, what? And what they discover is we don't see what's right in front of us. We see what we've been conditioned to see. So to create breakthrough vision, you got to break through the, using your memory and conditioning to see. Because whenever you use your memory to see, you do not see what is. You see mm -hmm. what was. Yeah. And the second you lock onto what was, you block out what is and could be. Ooh. So the first step in breakthrough leadership is to shape your future. Mm -hmm. The second is to energize and engage your team and yourself. Uh, when it comes to human performance, when it comes to teamwork, synergy, when it comes to a living life with joy, so much of it is energy. And yet we've never really learned about energy unless you took physics and that's a different kind of energy. <clears throat> and I want people to understand as breakthrough leaders, your energy is your choice. Um, and understanding how to cultivate that choice can transform not only your health, but your relationships, your career, and every aspect of your life. And finally, the third controllable is to build people, build teams, and build relationships. That every single person who's tuning into this podcast, whatever your business in, is in, at foundation, you're in the people business. It's the relationships you build, it's how you grow and help others grow that will determine how far you go. So when you master those three controllables, shape your future, energize and engage yourself and your team, build people, teams, and relationships, then you will begin to generate breakthrough results. Mm -hmm. um, and breakthrough results are doing things you had no idea you could do when you started out. And the key here is to focus on the controllables, not the result. Ooh. See, we want the results, but every time we focus on those, we take away our focus from what we do, what we do control. Um, uh, and so that's really the heart of breakthrough leaders. The best part is when you work at it every day, those three controllables, eventually breakthrough leadership moves from the outside to the inside, to who you become. Mm -hmm. And that's a model of personal excellence, integrity, accountability, and most of all, humility. Now, mm -hmm. many people think that being humble is somehow soft or weak. They couldn't be further from the truth. You can be very confident and very humble. Because being humble doesn't mean you think less of yourself. It means you think of yourself less. And the real reason why humility is so crucial to breakthrough leadership is only those who are humble are lifelong learners. Because, And I can see you are by looking at the books behind you. You're always <laughs> seeking to learn. Only those who are humble would rather be wrong and learn something from it than to pretend they're always right. Um, and finally, only those who are humble are focused on character rather than reputation. Character is who you are. Reputation only what others think you are. If you stick with that focus, it'll become your reputation. So that's kind of taking a, a whole mega seminar and putting it into a few words. Oh my gosh, Brian, in, in this moment that you just shared, I, I saw you turn to a 25 year old again. It was just, <laughs> it was amazing to watch you just light up to share what you feel you are so you know passionate about and it's so amazing and you have so many incredible things to unpack here and i'm going to encourage everybody that's listening to this rewind this listen to that again everything that uh, 
Brian was sharing with us because there's so much to unpack here. But, you know, one of the, the important things, you know, that resonated with me, Brian, is we're all leaders and it all comes from the choices we make to choose to control the things that we can control. And those things will have those ripple effects to move us forward. And I just, I love everything that you've shared with us and that in this condensed little little fashion here, but it was so powerful. And Thank I could you. see you're so passionate about that. And it's, that, that was incredible. Now, Brian, I wanna to get to your second point and you alluded to it a little bit in, in the first part was the energy, but you call it something very unique. And I, and I like how you've kind of tag this you you titled it e-power and and i love how you wrote it to me it's all in caps and you've got an exclamation point on your your note there so unpack that a little more for us what is this e-power and what is this energy you're talking about well again gary the key to the understanding e-power and i put the e-power because it needs to have a little extra a little extra <laughs> right. boost you know i felt I'm, it I'm terrible about exclamation points but i don't <laughs> care okay i was an english <laughs> minor but i still use them all right <laughs> And e-power, the reason why energy is so important, there's two foundational reasons. The first allows me to introduce all, all of your podcast watchers to the, my favorite word. And what would be a day in our life without another abbreviation and another, another acronym? And yeah. it's all about the W-O-O, -O, which is called the WOO, which really fun to say. Woo! Uh -huh. now, WOO stands for them. WOO stands for window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. and the window of opportunity that we all share is every precious moment. And what I mean by that is, you never know, I, I have a feeling it's right to happen and right now, you never know if the next person you'll meet in person today may become a lifelong friend, as you didn't know when you met your lifelong friend. You never know if the next conversation you have with your son, your daughter, your spouse, your grandchild, the person you happen to be sitting beside today, if something you say in that conversation may be so on target for what they didn't see with their own eyes, but you saw it, and then you seize that woo because you said it, and because of something you said to another human being, somebody's life got better. See, the question to everyone, because you are a breakthrough leader, is not, is there a woo? There is. The question you gotta ask yourself is, how many of those puppies have I missed? And why do I miss them? Well, the first reason why energy is so crucial to take charge of, energy helps you seize more woos. Simple as that. Now, have you ever noticed that when you have more energy, how much more alert you are to possibility? Mm -hmm. When you have energy, adversity doesn't seem so adverse. Uh, Napoleon Hill said, within every adversity is planted the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. In other words, the toughest things we make our way through, aren't they the very things that we learn the most from? Mm -hmm. when you have energy, you look for that seed of possibility. When you don't have energy, you get KO'd by the, by the adversity. So the first reason why energy is so crucial is energy puts you in a position to seize more woos and life is about seizing those woos. That was what our breakthroughs are. Second reason, and if everyone on this show gets this piece, it can change your life. To your children, no matter your age or their age, for as long as you draw breath, to your customers or potential customers, to your teammates, to your boss, to anyone that you care about having a positive impact on your life, your energy is your example. Your energy is your example. People won't remember that much of what you say, no matter how well you say it. Mm -mm. And they'll never forget your energy. So how do you elevate your energy by choice instead of chance in every precious woo? And here, again, we're condensing down, but there's two <laughs> yeah. simple ways. The first is so simple that we miss it like we miss yield signs. And here's what it is. From this moment forward, know that your energy is created by the way that you move, period. In other words, anytime you've been your most creative, anytime you've been your most dynamic, anytime you've been your most loving or understanding, you've moved your body distinctly differently than when you've not been your best. What specifically your body line and posture, your facial expression, your eye position, your focal point, and your breathing. Now, I, Gary, I said this to some people before and they go, well, Brian, if I had more energy, I'd move more. Ah, move more and you'll have more energy. Yeah. But everyone watching this has somebody in their life who amazes them because at a very advanced age, they have amazing energy. I, and I know two things about that person, though I don't know who they are. One, they're one of your heroes. There's somebody you admire who, who really is an example in your life. And number two, they keep moving. Mm -hmm. We don't get older, we just stop moving. So uh, if you wanna elevate your life, you gotta elevate your movement. You wanna move your life, you gotta move yourself. The second key, and we could spend a whole show on this, is your energy is in direct proportion to your level of purpose. Ooh. 
Whenever you're full of purpose, you're full of energy. You ever notice when you get to do what you love to do? I can tell you love doing these shows. It doesn't matter what how you've been feeling or what's been going on. When you get to do the show, energy is no problem. <laughs> but when we side of our purpose, our energy is is it's like a a pin going in a balloon. Yeah. Every event I speak, I bring a, a big photo of my family. They're my purpose. I love them more than life itself. And and as beautiful as these people are, I don't bring this photo with me to show my audience. I bring it with me to show me. And the last thing I do before I speak is I go to my purpose and I fill up with it. I think of how much I want to give them, how much I want to be for them, and it changes me immediately. So focus on your movement. In fact, if you focus on your purpose, movement will be there. Yeah. But it, focus on those two things. And finally, to release that person in your life who's your energy vampire. You know, we have that person in life. No matter what we do, we're not good enough. <laughs> and I always say the same thing to people who say, "Well, I feel good," except when I get around them. I said, "Well, stop it. It's not their energy. It's your energy, and they cannot take it from you unless you give them permission. So let it go, not out of anger or frustration, but out of joy. Release them, and suddenly they can't take your power, your energy." Move that energy on a 10 point scale up towards 9.5 and you'll be easy to impress and hard to offend. And that is an incredible energy formula. Oh my God, Brian, I, this is like a master's class this is in, in a doctor, doctoral level class, just condensed in. This is such such great stuff. I can't wait to go back and rewatch all of this, but I love the woo. It's a window of opportunity. I love, you know, I mean, your energy move to get the energy and find your inspiration to get your energy. And it's just, I mean, it's its so like common sense, but once you break it down and do these things, it really does make a difference. And I love that. And Brian, this last point that you bring up, I truly, truly resonate with this one. And it's be present, be fully present. And I think there's a uniqueness to today's times where we're so distracted we have a two second attention span, you know, social media, all the things so you can blame other things on it. Exactly. But what does it mean? And why does fully present inspire you? Well, first of all, what it means to be fully present means 100% of your mind, body and spirit is with the people you're with where they are now. Mm. And how many of us have been with somebody where we know their body's there, but the rest of them is in another county? Yeah. <laughs> so here's the key question about presence. How does it make you feel when someone you really wish to be present with you is not present with you? How does it make you feel when somebody you really want to connect with and you want to listen to and they hope they're listening to you is more interested at in peeking at the scores from last night on ESPN on their phone than they are at, be, and at actually being there? For everyone I've ever known, it makes them feel worth less. And here's why presence is so crucial. Presence is... Of all the things I teach, I think it's the foundation, the most important one, because there, there is no relationship without presence, because there is no trust, because you can't fake being present. And what presence says, whenever you're fully present with another individual, as I must comment, you are incredibly on these shows. You say to them, the one thing we must communicate as breakthrough leaders, if we want to build relationship, we want to build people with teams. We say to people through our presence and only through our presence, you are important. You matter, you yeah. count. That is the job. That's our gig, Breakthrough Leaders. Because when people feel important, they rise. When people feel important, they fall. They give up, they quit. Um, I thank my, my two children. My daughters are now all grown up and they're incredible people. But when they were eight and three, they gave me the master lesson of presence. Um, I was so caught up in my speaking career. I was on the road at least 20 days a month. And one night, when I could have been tucking them in, seizing that woo, which was really not so much tucking them in, reading the story, is letting them know you are the most important people in this world to my wife and I. Instead, I was reaching for my phone and they came in my office with their beautiful eight and three-year-old innocence and looked at me and said, Daddy, we just want to know, do you love your phone more than you love us? Oh, oh. I felt the blade go in very deep. Yeah. The person said, what you do scream so loudly, I can't hear a word you're saying. Mm. And when you are not present, you are saying to people beyond words, you're not that important to me. Oh. So 
inch by inch, anything's a cinch. You want to give everyone on your on your call a great opportunity to change their life. Pick out two people in your life who, for 30 days, you commit to be more fully present with. Now, it doesn't mean you have to spend more time with them. Your schedule may be such you have less time. But when you're with them, put the cell phone away. Ask more than tell. And then do what we rarely do. Actually listen before you formulate your response. You watch. After three or four days, they're going to look at you and go, there's something different about you. You've been, you've been working out. You're looking good. You change your hair. You're looking good. And as you become present with those two, you'll start to develop that present muscle until it becomes who you are with people. And, uh, I have a fun way of remembering. It says the past is history. The future a mystery. The gift is now. Yes. That's why we call it the present. So it is the ultimate key to trust because you can't fake it. You know, you know when somebody's fully there or 94% there. That yeah. 6% sticks out like a sore thumb. So by being more fully present with each person, you, may, you help them know that they matter and that they count. And when they do that, they rise towards their potential. Um, my mentor, the greatest coach of all time was John Wooden of UCLA basketball. Um, he was my friend. He wrote the foreword to my first book. But of all the things that I remember most about coach, he was the most present person I've ever met in my life. When you were with him, if bombs could be going off three feet from you and he was only tuned into you. And it's no coincidence that the most present person I know was also the greatest of all time at what he did. Might be in pretty good connection there. Yeah, little connection there. I I love this be present two person 30 day challenge. I'm going to add that to the show notes because I think that is such a valuable challenge that I'm I'm pulling away from this this conversation as well as all the other things that you've shared with us today. I'm going to add that to the show notes because I want to challenge everybody that's listening to this to be the fully present two person 30 day challenge and, and see the kind of difference it makes. Brian, I'm believing it's going to make an incredible difference. There's so much that you shared with us today, Brian. I mean, I love we're all leaders. It's the choices we make to control the things we want to control. We have the energy to create woo moments and we can do that by giving energy to other people by being fully present. It is just, I am like blown away by this conversation with you today. I'm inspired and we're, we're at the end of our time, but Brian, like you said, I could, I could talk to you for hours about this. This is incredible. Likewise. But before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. You know, the, probably the most important words I've ever written is just a simple little sentence. And it hit me like a rocket ship at the perhaps the most important moment of my life where I could have gone one way or the other. And it's a simple statement. It says, the love we fail to share is the only pain we live with. The love we fail to share is the only pain we live with. And my, my last comment is, if you don't seize that woo, if you don't start sharing your appreciation, your gratitude, your affection, your love at a little higher basis, then the love you fail to share may become the only pain you leave with. Oh. And that's too late. And so it means really th look at the power of gratitude. Of all the emotions, the highest frequency emotion is gratitude. And, and when you recognize that whenever you seek to enrich another per person's experience, you can't help but enrich your own, yeah, you want to get out there and do more of it because we we only have a certain amount of time in in this body in this life and so the love we fail to share is the only pain we live with live pain free and start to deliver it more and it starts by being present and doing it with energy oh my gosh brian so good i, I so agree with you gratitude is an energy multiplier um it's a generosity approach i, I just absolutely love what you've shared with us hey make sure you go grab a copy of his book i'm going to put brian's website link in the show notes guys go check him out connect with him grab this book read it tag it up because i promise you it is an it's an absolutely incredible book it really did inspire me it's 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 small but it's impactful it it, it holds a powerful punch so guys thank you so much for joining us today brian i i am honored that you shared with us so much incredible information Rewatch this. I'm telling you guys, rewatch this program. Take notes because it's that incredible. Thank you again. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks a million. Brian, that was amazing. 